sons of God are manifested, when the sons of God are revealed, when the sons of God come to a place that they are brought forth, it is a dimension. Praise God. Praise God. It is a dimension whereby you are now operating in the authority or you are now operating in a place where you are representing God. That is why when you read your Bible in Romans chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says to them that received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, to become the children of God. When we came to a place where we believed in God, there is a power, there is an authority that was given to us. There is a power that there is an authority that was given to us by God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So to them that received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. The biggest problem is having believers. The biggest problem is having people that are not operating or that do not understand their domain and their authority as a believer. We have a lot of people that proclaim that they are children of God. We have a lot of people that proclaim that they are believers. We have a lot of people that received Christ, but we have few people that understand how they should operate in Christ. Am I talking to somebody here? I said, am I talking to somebody here? To an extent, Stand that I believe when God sees from heaven, there is something that acts in his spirit. When God sees from heaven, there is a cry in his spirit, looking at the sons of men. Instead of operating in their authority as believers and his sons, they are operating as slaves. There is something that acts God, looking at believers who act little than heathens. I love it when the Bible speaks and tells me of men like John. When you read your Bible in Matthew 11 verse 12 the Bible declares something about John. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence shall take it by force. What the Bible is revealing is that when John came to a place where he survived in this dimension of the, of, of, of the fleshly man he, he, he operated and he broke a certain barrier that he set a course in the realm of the spirit. He set a dispensation in the realm of the spirit. Hear me. I want you to understand. When you continuously hear Apostle Paul speaking about the dispensation, dispensations are generated, dispensations are brought forth or birthed by men. Many people talk about revival. They do not understand that when Paul spoke in Romans 8 verse 19 to say that world is endlessly waiting for the manifestation of the sons, what he was talking about. The world is already in bondage. The world is already in corruption. Do you know that when people talk about revival, they do not know what they are talking about? Do you know that when people talk about prayer, they do not know what they are talking about? That is why when we talk about revival, people are thinking about people being slain under the power. Somebody shouting, take it, and people rolling on the ground. When we talk about revival, we are talking about a revival of a situation that was once okay and the enemy destroyed it. We are reviving something back to its own original place. So many people talk about God. And one of the things that I've seen when we talk about the Holy Spirit in our generation, everybody's talking about casting out devils. Everybody's talking about coming to a place where I can prophesy. And the Holy Spirit has been limited only to prophesy. The Holy Spirit has been limited only to speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit has been limited only for people to say, Reba, ba, 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 ba. Rita, ma, bota, anta, ma, bota. But there is something more about the Spirit spirit of God. There is something grieving from the spirit of God when people talk about revival because they do not understand what they are talking about. 